What's up, y'all? What's going on, man? We had another good episode of Star Girl, man. This this episode went right along with Supergirl, as in a way where you know Supergirl was about Black Lives Matter and the systemic racism and how superheroes are blind to the smaller problems and stuff that goes on around them that don't that they can't really relate to. This episode was more about a religious question. And that question was get, brings us to what this episode was about. This episode was a Yolanda heavy episode. So, this this is a review for Star Girl season 7, I'm mean season 7, season 2 episode 7, Summer School chapter 7. Uh, the synopsis reads when the guilt over brainwave brainwave's death Becomes too much for uh, to handle. Yolanda is forced to make a heartbreaking decision. Um, this episode starts off with Yolanda. Like I said, this is a Yolanda heavy episode. This starts off with Yolanda at at the church in the uh, confessional booth. Basically, this time for the first time in this season, she actually wants to talk. She tells the preacher that no, the the preacher comes in. He said, "Do you want to talk or do you just want to sit here?" You no, know, allowing her to build, you know, basically for the past episode, to build up to this moment. And she finally says, I want to talk. And she starts this whole episode off with the question I, I, I was saying. The religion question is, if you kill some, if somebody is truly, purely evil, and you killed, and you, if you kill them, will you still be, will you be wrong or good in God's eye? Because she wanted to know. If she if she had to kill somebody and that person was truly evil, do that still make do she still is she still gonna be looked upon as good or is she gonna be looked upon as evil or bad herself in God's eye? And she and the preacher he's grows concerned too because he's like oh God you know we, 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 we're, we're talking about killing somebody and all this and that and, and that and that and um. She looked like she was building up, you know. She's trying to build up to the confession that she murdered someone. Because now this episode is so that Yolanda's guilt over Brainwave's death, over her killing Brainwave, has gotten to a fever pitch. Uh, so yeah, this episode uh, transitioned from this to this. Uh, the next scene transitions to uh, Courtney and Pat discussing uh, why. It, while the uh, staff now glowing again, it slowly had to slowly get, you know, regain the strength that whatever the staff did to um, Eclipse or Eclipse or hurt the staff just as bad. And that they start talking about how Eclipso, was Eclipse of the Endgame is, was his motive, and why he's still in Blue Valley. Because if he was gone, Pat noted, uh, noted that if he was gone, if he truly was gone, the, the weather would change. It would go back to normal. The weather hasn't gone back to normal because he's still in the city. And they said that's. And Courtney was basically saying, if that's the case, then what did he want? You know, why is he here? Uh, we get. We're gonna get into that. Or should I say, kind of. We kind of. We kind of get that glimpse of what he wants because what he he is actually doing it in this episode. But why? But the thing I like about the episode, it it make this episode so focused on Yolanda and her guilt with Brainwave. You forgot that this was all being done by Eclipso. You were, it actually made it seem this episode actually made you made it basically seem like Eclipso. I mean Brainwave with the bad guy of the episode, but he couldn't have been if he was dead. Um, so yeah, then we transition from that scene to. Another scene with Yolanda. Back to Yolanda. She's at work this time, you know, still having her thoughts lost in her own head about what she's done. She gets started by a co-worker. And, you know, the co-worker asks her if she's right, if she's doing okay. She said, yeah, I'm doing fine. And she tells, the co-worker tells Yolanda, Ed, you got angry, uh, I think his name is Jim, something like that, at her table, and that... It, it, but she sees how distraught Yolanda is after realize after she realized who was at the table. She's like, oh, I don't want it. Oh, and she's like, you know what? I got this. You know, you know, just do you for right now. Be, you know, she just want her to be okay. So she goes to talk to him, 
and the dude's basically getting hostile with it, saying that he been waiting here forever and that if he if this wasn't the only decent night like, food slash coffee shop in town, you know, little spot, he was gonna have to uh he would have been at the other spot, you know, and he could have. This angers her to the point where one of her eyes glow purple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that was a that was a bad eerie. Uh, that was really bad. I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, her eyes the eyes go purple, and she takes the coffee, the hot coffee, I might add, and pours it on the customer, like not on his head, but like on his shoulder. He's like, ah, ah you know what the hell? What are you doing? And you know, the, uh, she's like, and she snaps out of it as you see her eye, her one eye go back to normal. She's like, oh my God, I thought you was holding out your, holding out your coffee mug. So, and it's, and they, everybody's freaking out, trying to get, you know, the boss is basically saying she okay. And he ended up sending her home. And while this is going down, Yolanda sees a little boy. Not realizing that little boy is a clip of himself. That, you know, she's, she gives him a lie pop and tell him. That you know, not to worry about what he just seen, everything's okay. And you know, to this life pop, I think she's told him what flavor it was. And you know, he takes it, you know, like the little kid would, like a little kid would. He takes it, and Yolanda looks back at the commotion, gets distracted, right? But then when she looks back at the kid, the kid is gone. And then I'm just like, Wait, what? Oof. And she just brushed it off and walks away. But then the camera pans to the window that was in front of Yolanda. And it goes like this. It zooms outside to show you that the little boy is now outside across the street. Not necessarily looking back at the at the diner. Now he just like he's like looking both ways. A crystal playing mind games. Um I didn't I'm trying to remember what did it transition to after that scene, particular scene. Uh, come on, think, 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 think. Um, yeah. Okay. So after that, it transitions to. I want to say the uh, the school. Did it transition to the school? No, it transitions to. Uh, they it transitions to uh, Courtney's mother, and she has this meeting. She has this meeting. About what they 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 had like these budget cuts they might have to lay off a, a, a whole like a hundred some people and she's like you know you know Courtney's mom like we don't have to like necessarily uh, lay off a hundred seventy seven people but what they gonna do for work and she's like you know I feel she the lady tells uh, uh, Courtney's mom you know I feel you I hear you and I feel for the people but. The world, she said, the road to hell is always paid with good intentions. And they, you know, she's like, What would you do? You know, how would you handle this? What would you do? And she takes, she makes a suggestion that they sell off and burn off some back, uh, some liquidations of the company, some stuff that they could sell off to make up the money to do something for these 170, 177 people. And, you know, she, they said, Well, she said, without this, you know, people are going to basically, you know, not be able to do whatever. And she's like, well, you know, all right. You know, the dude's like, so let's take it to a vote. Everybody for um, Courtney's mom. Everybody said, you know, he didn't say Courtney's mom. But, you know, they all raised their hands. You know, I'll, I'll vote in the one lady. And she, like, one lady is just like. <sighs> she just she just submit defeat. Realize that everybody voted against her. She just go. Whatever. So yeah. So after that, she hit. Uh, she she. Uh, her name was Emily. Emily. Yeah, that's what. Uh, uh, that's what the shade was. Uh, was he? He kept calling her name, and he, she was looking around trying to figure out who was calling her name. And then she looks up finally, and she sees like this, this, uh, this spot of shade that's that's little by little already been evaporated into the ceiling and a, dr a drop of look like the blackness of the shade but it turns out to be the shade's blood uh then it transitions back to um i want to say it was a scene where courtney 
was walking with this. She was walking and then she got scared by I you know icicle son tried to do one of those. Hey, how you doing? You know the type of you know surprise uh, hellos and she grabs him. You know, twists his arm and like yeah, hi ya. What you doing? And she was like, he like, she's like, oh my god, no, it's you, it's you. She, he, he was like, yeah, I, you know, I'm not gonna surprise you no more. And and she's like, I'm sorry. And you know, he said, yeah, I came over here and asked me, did you want to go see, you know, such and such? And he was like, and she says yes. But then she kept getting these text text messages about training. And she was like, you know what? He said, he said, you know, Courtney, it's okay if you gotta go. And and she and she said no, I'm right where I need to be. So she takes off. She walks off with him. Um, then we transition over to Yolanda. I think. I think no. I think after that we transition to the scene with Emily. Then we transition to Yolanda coming out. Uh, coming out of the uh, the uh, diner after having clocked out for work, and she starts getting these strange headaches again. And she sees Yolanda. I mean, Yolanda sees Courtney and the guy across the street. And then when she passes to pass, pass next to them, like down the street, so you see Brainwave. You know, he just sitting there looking at it like, "You killed me." <laughs> uh, that was bad too. But yeah, he uh, he. He basically gives her this evil stare, and Yolanda's like, oh, my God, you know, and she gets his headache, and then she sees Courtney, so she's like, she goes back to Courtney, like, she wants to go tell Courtney what's happening, but she sees her with the guy, so she's like, no, it can wait. They go, they get to school where she, Courtney is texting them, and having a fun time, she's like, having this great time texting. It was, like, weird, because she's like, the the news, uh, the new uh, summer school teacher didn't realize she was on the phone while he was trying to teach the class. It was so, it was like funny, and everything he suggested nobody wanted to learn. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, then after that, um, Yolanda pretty much was like, after she see the test message, she just like she dozed off, and she but she startled back up and. She you know she's like oh, okay I just must have dozed off for a minute I'm good now right, but then she sees something at the door, and she see what she sees is her ex boyfriend so she's like oh man you no know, brainwaves uh son so she gets up to go after them but you know that something's off even with Courtney so absorbed into her phone she wouldn't know you know. Yolanda having a headache or her just jumping out in the middle of her chair to go follow something. Like a, like a brain dead zombie. What, was that a good analogy? Huh. Yeah. Like a brain dead zombie. She just basically gets up and goes after. Uh, I'm trying to. I was trying to figure out was that a good analogy. But yeah. She goes after. Uh. The, the dead boyfriend, she follows him into the hallway. She gets another headache, but she's like, I'm going to muster through this. And she tries to go follow him, and he and she ends up bumping, to, uh, bumping into Brainway, who taunts her about her guilt, about her uh, about uh, her killing him. And he starts repeatedly saying her name, and you realize it was Courtney trying to wake her up. And Courtney's like, are you, Yolanda, are you okay? And Yolanda's like, what? She looks around, she realized the teacher and start teaching. The kid, the rest of the kids at the summer class, they like this, they like, you know. And she realized she was having a night terror or a waking um, nightmare where she was talking in her, she was, she was asleep, but she was talking in her sleep. So they realized she was screaming, she was, must have been screaming out, They even though they didn't sew it. You could tell she was because everybody was looking at her. She must have been screaming in her sleep about something. So, uh, you know, Courtney tried to ask her what was going on. And she tells her that, you know, that she's just not having the headaches with the loud noise in her head. And the like, migraine-like feeling. Now she's also getting visions. Visions of brainwave and brainwave sun. So... In, and so in that, 
Courtney, like, man, we got to tell somebody because we haven't told nobody. I know you didn't want to tell nobody. But we we got to. We got to tell somebody. You got to get this off your chest. So she or, she organized her own little meeting at her house because, you know, Rick is like, why is we meeting here and not, at the, uh, not with Pat and them? And she basically tried to nudge Yolanda on to tell them, to tell them that Yolanda's like, I don't think I can do this. She's like, yes, you can. It's okay. And Yolanda basically spills her guts about what happened. And Rick and, and Beth are like, they like, oh my God. Like, they, like they're shocked to hear this. You know, they, they really are shocked. They're like, oh my God, you know. Wow. And then Rick goes, you know, you're not you're okay. You did what you had to. If I had the chance to kill Brainwave, I would have too. She, she was, and she looks like, but you had the chance to kill Solomon Grundy. Why didn't you? He said, my time was up. But she was like, no, nah, I don't think it was. I don't. I think what it was, you couldn't kill. Um, you couldn't kill Solomon Grundy, and you just let him go. And um, basically, she he tried to reassure her that she did the right thing, and that she was, she, you know, not she should feel guilty about it. And he wanted Beth, he you know, called for Beth to chime in, but Beth was oddly silent and silent. So when they look over, Beth is just like, she's basically still in shock to hear that her friend killed a brainwave, and she's like, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. And she look and she and Yolanda looks at Courtney and Courtney like oh god like cause she gives her that I told you so look that they wouldn't understand and Yolanda basically explodes on them because she's like if we find a clip so I'm gonna be the one to have to take them out I'm the one that's better at doing this I'm the one that's better at doing that you're not so. I'm going to go, I'm going to have to be the one to do it. I'm going to have to be the one to kill, because what she said, because you know what we got to do once we find him. We're going to have to kill him. And she said, Ain't none of y'all could do it, so it's going to have to be me. And she's like, I'm going to have to be the member of the, J the JSA that, act, that kills people. And then, you know, she uh, she gets upset and walks away. And, and she tries. Courtney tries to stop her, and she just Courtney, Courtney just looks back at everybody, just like. And Beth is like, "I'm sorry, I truly am. I I just didn't know, you know." She basically she just she just so sorry that she couldn't give an answer that would have helped Yolanda. Yolanda runs back to the confessional booth. She has this. Uh, she ch she finally tells the preacher about the murder. Um, no, I think she, I think she ran to the confessional booth to, and then saw, uh, or she ran there and then saw her mother with the pastor and while they was talking, she saw brainwave and then I think she went to the confessional booth to basically confess that, you know, there was, um, that she murdered someone and, uh, uh it turned out that person, that pre the pastor wasn't there. It was brainwave. Brainway tried to have a fight, like a mini fight with her, where he had to levitate or reveal what he did to her, or he, you know, just try to make her think he did to her, uh, because we don't know if that really real or not. Um, yeah, he uh, he basically taunts her about it, and to the point where they had this fight. So in the fight. Yolanda basically like levitates and brainwaves like I put myself in your head when you was gloating and sitting over my body. I put myself in your head, and now I'm gonna. You're so weak from your guilt that I'm gonna gain control, and brainwave will live on through you. You know how many more people have you killed? And I think he said that earlier in the episode, but uh, they had this fight, right? So he you, he levitates her, brings her back, and says all that type of stuff. But then she gets the better of him, and she trans she like transform herself into Wildcat, and she starts fighting with him, and then she ends up doing it again. She ends up slitting his throat. And he's like, oh God, <laughs> and he goes down, and she's like, 
it transformed into her boyfriend, and her boyfriend, her ex boyfriend tells her, "You're gonna burn too. You're gonna go. You're gonna burn on too with me." And then he he like, and she's like, "No." She's like, "No, no, no." They all of a sudden just blind and light, and you realize Courtney. I forgot to tell you, Courtney was there too, and um. Like Courtney got attacked, you could tell it was something up because when she was like Courtney behind you, and Courtney Turner was like shocked to see Brain uh, Brainwave. She tries to fight him, but then you know Brainwave like basically, <laughs> and Courtney's just like oh god, oh boom, <laughs> and um, Courtney uh, it, I was like it's something up because how did Courtney see Brainwave too? But then you saw once that blind light happened. Once she was holding her dead boyfriend in, in her hand, and he started burning along where I'm guessing her burning. And it shows that it's, it's showing that Courtney was there. She used the staff to like bring uh, Yolanda out of it, and Yolanda just gets upset. It was just like she said, "Why me? I did. I wasn't supposed to have anything." I was after what you know what happened. If you don't know what she's talking about, she's talking about like last season when she embarrassed herself by sending that picture. To her ex boyfriend that actually got uh, sent around school, and she's like, she basically was like, after that whole fiasco, <clears throat> and even um, after that whole fiasco, I wasn't supposed to have anything. I didn't want anything from anybody, and I just all I wanted was to be left alone. But you could, you just couldn't let it happen, could you, Courtney? She like, you couldn't just leave it alone. You just had to come be fr be friends with me and pull me into your life of superheroism. And she, you know, Courtney's like, wait a minute, what? What are you talking about? She said, like, me. Um, I, I'm saying, why me, Courtney? Why did you choose me to be Wildcat? I would. Nobody was supposed to get hurt. You know. And she was like, and she said, I can't. You know. She tells her a very heartbreaking decision. That leads to her, and that leads to Courtney trying to, to call her. You know, Courtney is trying to get in contact with her, but then Yolanda won't uh, answer. But then Yolanda's mother answers the phone, and she basically tells her that her, you know, her influence over her daughter is what led to her delinquency. Don't ever call her again or quit calling. And uh, basically, Yolanda and Courtney's relationship took a hit. Yolanda, Courtney is hurt. Um, they uh they real they sit there they talk i think um pat i think one of the last season was pat and them talking about what yolanda did finding revenge to pat how what really happened to brainway what yolanda did to save them and you know they end up being on her side you know saying that you know courtney and yolanda had to do it for a good reason right there had to be a reason why you know um so courtney you know, upset the, uh, her stepbrother. He reveals like how he, he also felt guilty for uh, for killing Icicle. Um, I'm trying to see was there anything else? Um, oh yeah, there was a little cliffhanger at the end with Beth. That I'm a, if you haven't seen the episode, go see it. Uh, but yeah, at, with all that being said. If I give this episode anything, I give it a nine point five big up just just because it wasn't a perfect ten. It wasn't a perfect ten, but it wasn't a bad episode either. Like I really don't have nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't a perfect ten, but it was a good enough episode. Like it wasn't, it wasn't as good. Like you know, it had to follow that 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 episode of Supergirl, and that episode of Supergirl was good. It had to follow that, but it wasn't. It just wasn't as good. But it still head on to some very hard hitting questions about whether or not hey. If I kill somebody for just to save somebody, or we're good, and I had to kill this person to to save you, do I still? As I'm still good, a per, I'm still a good person in the eyes of God, you know. But if you enjoyed this video, um, hit that button right there in the upper right corner for all of my reviews. And if you enjoyed this video so much, you want to support the channel, then hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, become part of the fam, and acknowledge me as your one and only tribal chief. The only channel that matters. And hit that notification button so you get notified when I drop videos. And as always, hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. Chief is out. I'm out. But I will have some gameplay videos for you tomorrow. Peace.